Patrick O'Danny, an amazing person who loved his family and friends, music, sports, and was described as a friend to everyone he met. Very, very kind. I think Patrick had a heart of gold. That's my, you know, that's the first thing that I would say about him. Charismatic is the definite, the definite word for Patrick. Yeah, Charisma is not something you learn in an acting school. It's something you either have or you don't have. He definitely had it. Very handsome. <laughs> and just, he was just over the top. I don't know, he had such a huge personality. I've never met anybody like him. He was very hyper. And my mother was 38 when she had him. And he was flaky like a little biscuit. <laughs> and he had real long fingers. And my grandpa said, he's gonna grow up to be a piano player or a pickpocket with those long fingers. And he did grow up to be a piano player. and I wanted a baby brother, and I always liked getting what I wanted. So finally I got one, and so we have an eight-year eight age difference. I remember when my dad, at the restaurant, you know, which was called Angelo's, uh, the day that my brother was born, he made a big sign that said, and son, and put that on the front of the, the restaurant. Yeah, he was, he was a rambunctious kid. He would be the kid at the top of the tree, and she'd be yelling at him, get down from the tree, kind of thing. And the natural talent, which I think he got from my mother, was a big band singer with Harry James um, in Hollywood in the 1950s. Natural talent and natural good looks. He was a kid actor in the Muni Opera. He was in Wizard of Oz and Oliver, and I think Kismet. And he did his own tap dancing and singing at Carmen Thomas. Carmen Thomas had a dance studio here that my mother took from, and then I took from. And somehow my mother figured out that Patrick was talented. The agency Talent Plus had just opened up in St. Louis, and she got him down there for modeling. And, you know, he always worked since he was six, seven years old. He was always in showbiz. I've known Patrick since I was, I think, in third grade. But I do certainly remember meeting him uh, at Rossman School, where we were classmates together. And I think I had two reasons to know him. One, we were in school together. Two, our parents were friends. And uh, so we were kind of pressed together that way and became really fast, close friends. Uh, and it didn't take long. I mean, Patrick, to know Patrick was to love Patrick. Um, and then shortly after getting to know him a little bit, we moved into the same neighborhood where he lived. It was called Williamsburg Estates. Um, and we were neighbors. And so we played every day during school and then played every day after school. I had one of the best imaginations of any of my friends better than mine. Um, he was really talented. You could see that at a young age and somebody that was not uh, afraid or intimidated to talk to adults uh, and uh, certainly was the little leader of our group uh, that we ran around with in Williamsburg Estates. But he was just somebody that, um, just made those around him smile. We we and just lived at each other's houses and uh, would make up plays and sing and run around. Man, it just was a great way to grow up. He he is as much a part of my childhood as other members of my family. He was somebody that was that was really uh, the perfect combination of wild and sweet. And you at, at that age, you want your friends to be fun and crazy and but he was also sweet he was sweet to me he was somebody that always had an ear uh to listen to whatever was going on in my life he was sweet to my younger sister um 
and and then was just really funny. So, you know, I, his nickname for me was Joner. And that came from uh, Gilligan's Island, the captain on Gilligan's Island, the skipper, his name, which nobody knows, was Jonas Grumby. That was, uh, yeah, nobody knows that that was his name. And so I went from Joe to Jonas to Joner. Uh, and, and he was just always Patrick to me. I didn't come up with anything creative for him. So I was Joner uh, and he was Patrick. I just hope that his kids know how special of a father uh, they have. And uh, I think it's important that they know that, that their dad was a guy that was just loved by everybody around him. Later on in high school, he, he had bands in high school. His first one was called DWI. They put out flyers that said, we'll take anything, cash, beer, whatever. They worked for beer. He always did his rock and roll stuff. He did some very good music. He wrote his own music. He um, could play every instrument, was always the front man and the leader. He loved to put on a show. He wasn't the type of person who would just, you know, go out there in a t-shirt and kind of like sing a song. No, he was kind of like, it's Freddie Mercury and Elton John. He had to have an outfit. He had to have an entrance. <laughs> He really had some good lyrics. He wrote good lyrics. Sometimes he'd uh, co-write with one of his neighbors that lived in the neighborhood where his family is. Uh, he'd go over to this guy's house late at night. He'd sneak off after Olga went to bed and they'd have a couple beers and just start writing down words would come to them and then Patrick might have a, a line or two of music that he'd work it to and they would collaborate and it was just very organic in nature, their process. The real test of time is that 266 years from this very moment, someone somewhere in an undisclosed underground location in deep outer space is playing my composition. Case in point, Mozart. Because Patrick was a night owl, he would go to his house and they would sit there and Jeff would write some lyrics and Pat would come up with music and they were both extremely excited about it. You know, I think he, he just enjoyed it. You know, he just, I mean, music and performing was the thing that really got him excited. I just think he did, he did his absolute, always gave 100%. He was big on that. You know, be the hardest worker in the room and be appreciative and just do what you love doing. And what he loved to do was perform. He loved performing and he was good at it. The Adrian connection began here when Steven Soderbergh was filming A King of the Hill, which is A.E. Hotchner's life story. And Adrian played one of the characters, not A.E. Hotchner, somebody else in the movie. And Patrick was his stand in and double and they just became best buddies and always were friends then. I understand that in this film, Clean, uh, someone very important to you was given an unusual credit for the mm. film. Oh. Who, who, was, who was that and why? Uh, so, uh, yeah, so, um, uh, one of my dearest friends, uh, his name is Patrick Oldani. Uh, he was my stand-in, he was assigned as my stand-in when I was 19 on Steven Soderbergh's film, King of the Hill. Wow. And uh, we, we filmed in, uh, um, in St. Louis, and we've been best friends. My parents call him the good son, <laughs> which would imply. Sure, uh, obviously, yes. yes. And um, he's just, he's, he's been in my life for, forever. He's, he met his wife uh, indirectly coming to visit me f uh, for New Year's. We used to have this thing. Anyway, Patrick's, Patrick passed away last year, unfortunately, and um, it's, it is a loss. Uh, and he was a wonderful guy, but he was, uh, he was kind of, um, he, 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 well, we credited him as uh, comic relief. Um, 
which was his request. And, Comic um, relief in this movie. In this film, yeah. So if you, if you make it to the end credits of Clean, you will see that Patrick is uh, uh, assigned as comic relief for the film. And he, he really was. Um, and he really held everyone up, but he, he was a pillar of support for me. This was a very difficult movie, and I but don't want di to digress. You also wrote this. I, I co-wrote the film, but it's something that I've been yearning to make for well over a decade, and I brought on Paul Sled, our director, and we wrote this together, and um, I made this movie, and, and something that I've been yearning to do for many years. It was very challenging to make an independent film from scratch, very independently, and... Um, and Patrick really held me up. And one day on set, and Patrick was, uh, he was like a rock star. He was, he was very talented. And, and um, he, uh, it was freezing. We shot in winter. And, and Patrick was standing in front of one of our many heaters that didn't really keep anybody warm. And the poor crew was freezing all the time. We were all freezing to death. It was horrible. And uh, one of the crew members looked over to Patrick and was like, hey, man, you're on fire. <clears throat> and he said, uh, huh? He said, you're on fire. And he goes, oh, thanks. <laughs> he goes, no, 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 literally, man, your, your leg is burning. And he, he had caught on fire and, you know, had to put himself out and everything. And, and then, you know, everybody was like, whoa, the, the working conditions are really terribly unsafe. And I'm like, no, 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 that's just Pat. That's Patrick. You know, Patrick found a way to... Be on fire. You know, like, Pat was always on fire, you know. There was another passion. He loved St. Louis steamers. And, I mean, I, I knew nothing about St. Louis steamers, you know, but... Um, he, I remember he told me about them before they came back. When we met, he was always talking about St. Louis steamers. He grew up with St. Louis steamers and a lot of his friends. And he played soccer all his life, too. He just, he played soccer since Chaminade. Patrick went to Europe with Adrian. They went to, uh, there's a thing, it's called Gumball. It's a car race, and it happens in different parts of the world every I don't know how often it happens, but Adrian was invited to do the gumball. And he said, you got to come with me. I can't do it without you. And Emma was a baby. She was, I don't know, she was like a year old, I think. And Patrick said, well, I'm, I'm very sorry, but I got to go with, with, with Nick. He called him Negron. It was, they had like weird names for each other. She goes, I got to go with my brother. They went and it was from... Uh, Paris and they went to through Morocco and uh, Barcelona and it ended up at the Cannes Film Festival and um, so they got to the Cannes Film Festival they won the race which I think they cheated because they left in the middle of the night when everybody else was partying in Barcelona and they just went and took off and they got their first so like, they won the gumball <laughs> and they went to the Vanity Fair party after the at the Cannes you know and he met a guy from Philadelphia um, who was, he was like, I don't even know what business he had, I don't remember. So he, anyway, he convinced him to invest a million dollars into the steamers. And he and his friend, he, the, yeah, the guy convinced his friend, and they invested into the steamers, and he, they kept the steamers. So that was like a big story that... Patrick saved the steamers, you know, for yet another, I don't know how many, two years they were here after that, but oh my gosh. All he wanted is for them to win. Here's to the losers, and here's to the winners. Ow. His church work, he was a musical director at church, and that was, Patrick was so multifaceted, it's Crazy. You would never think this guy would be a musical director at church. Oh yeah, baby, that's right. It's Sunday fun day. Now that we finish Sunday services, I think Barb and I are gonna kick it off with a little time rock and roll. Maybe a little Saints. Maybe a little soft shoe. But all I know is that Sunday is my favorite day of the week. Why? Cause I get to do this. Oh, baby. We got it. We, we got to work on the ending a little bit. Yeah, what is it? A little bit. 
and the whole parish, they're all elderly people. They're just the sweetest bunch of old people. And they all felt like grandmas and grandpas. You know, it's like they were our adopted <laughs> grandparents. And Patrick loved it. He used to say that Sunday was his favorite day of the week because he gets to go to church and he gets to sing for Jesus and he gets to hang out with them. And it was so sweet. And they absolutely adored him. But one of Patrick's favorite roles was being a husband and a father. My friend uh, was going to New York for New Year's Eve and Patrick was going as well. He was going to uh, visit Adrian Brody and my friend uh, met him at the airport. They got, uh, it was snowstorm, whatever, so they got stuck in the airport. And um, they sat on the plane together, chatted, exchanged phone numbers and said, well, you know, let's get together back in St. Louis with our friends. So uh, they came back and in about, I don't know, a few weeks, she said, let's go out, let's go, Let, let's call this guy Patrick, you know, and meet up with him and his friends. So, and um, that's just how it happened. We just started going out with a bunch of friends. We, you know, became good friends and we would go out all together with a big crowd of people. And he said, oh, I heard you went out with so-and-so. I wanted to ask you out, uh, but you know, I probably won't because everybody else, everybody else is asking you out probably. You hear it all the time. And I said, well, I don't think you can ask me out because I think you're kind of gay. I don't know, it was like, I'm not, it's not a great thing to say, but you know, he could be very flamboyant and I knew he was a straight man, but you know, I kind of said, and then we, we always laughed about it. It was funny, he liked, he liked to laugh about that. That was just a funny story. The first time we met, we went at Cheshire when we all went out together with his friends and with my friend. And um, we actually celebrated our anniversaries there often. We would get, you know, they have all these themed suites and things like that. So we would go back there all the time for our anniversaries. We just like Cheshire, we used, it kind of was like, our place to go back to. He actually proposed to me at the Rams game. You know, we were big fans of St. Louis, we were big football fans, and we had season tickets. And um, it was a playoff game, because that's when they were great. And, um, and they won the game, and I was so excited, and I'm pregnant, and I'm like, I'm hungry, and I'm excited. And he said, is there anything that would make you happy? And I said, yeah, if they win the Super Bowl, he goes, <laughs> what about this, you know, and he produced the ring and all the neighbors around us, you know, it's the same people because it's the season tickets holders. So they kind of saw us all the time. So it was kind of like, very, oh, yay, you know, it, was, it was pretty cute. We got married in the courthouse and I had a big belly. And then we had a reception at Spiros. It wasn't like a big traditional way. It was just like a party. You know, we had a party at Spiros. We had a private room. That's another place that we would always go back for our anniversary to have dinner at Spiros. And then the time came when Patrick got one of his best gigs, being a dad. He was so excited. With Emma, she, um, she was, I think, a soccer player, even inside because she, two weeks before her birth, she flipped and she was a bridge baby. So I had to have a C-section and I was so upset because we went to classes to do all the breathing. Like, what are we gonna do now? Um, and then the morning of my surgery, I'm like, oh, you know what? I think I just had a contraction and I do not like it. Let's go have a surgery. So when we had her, I was in the hospital. After C-section, they keep you in the hospital a little longer. So, um, and she was always with me. And then one night, Patrick left to go home for a little bit, um, just to change clothes. And I told, and the nurse said, let me take her. Let me take her to the nursery. You need to get some rest. So she took her away and Patrick came back and she said, where's the baby? And I said, well, they took her to the nursery for an hour. He goes, no, 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 no. She cannot be there. And she ran to the nursery. <laughs> and got her back and um, 
my kids still have the same pediatrician. We have this wonderful pediatrician. And she would always say, I'll never forget. I would come to check on the baby. And he would always be on that little, like a couch in the room, you know, like a little pull out chair. He would always be there. He'd always be sleeping there. So oh yeah, he was he was so excited and he was he was stay at home dad. He was absolutely obsessed with her and with Dominic and then the Dominic was a boy, you know, there's another thing, there's a boy. He was extremely proud of them. Hello. Hi. 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 Going live. Ladies and gentlemen from the Great White North, introducing Flash on Ice. And he was a really good dad. He was very hands-on with his kid. He taught, he taught Emma how to play soccer, um, did a lot of the boy stuff with the boy, Dominic. He enjoyed his children and got that little extra bit of time with them. Flash on ice. Woo! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, from the Great White North, we're talking flash on ice. Once again, great to see you out there in the winter wonderland. Coming to you live from an undisclosed location on a frozen lake. Hey, baby. This is Flashbook Live coming to you from an undisclosed location in a lot of a lot of tall grass and weeds you're trying to stay low we got a beautiful sunset happening we're trying to stay low behind behind the action so that we can't be seen because we are doing some trespassing but that's okay that's sometimes that's what you have to do that's right it's flash cam sunday flash cam sunday Today's issue is the nature edition. People don't think I'm crazy. There are people nearby. Anyway. Pretty much everybody liked Patrick. Um, I would say things like, you would have liked my brother. You know, I'm sorry you didn't get to meet him. Because here, listen to some of his music. Look, Patrick was a friend to everybody. You will meet Patrick and five minutes later, he'll be your best friend. People absolutely loved him. You know, after he passed away, I had so many people who would, you know, they came to me and they would say, you know, Patrick was my best friend. And then another person would come, you know, Patrick was my best friend. You know, Patrick may not know it, but he was my best friend. It was amazing how many people said that to me. Yeah, he, he just had uh, a very big heart. Patrick Angelo Old Danny. Funny, creative, passionate, the life of the party. A man with an engaging personality, an endearing person who cared about others. A friend, son, brother, husband, and father who loved his family and will no doubt always be with them and send them signs he's still there. I think of him all the time and I see like little things and little signs and I know the kids do too because they always tell me, you know, like, you know, I thought of Pop today. That made me think of him. So, yeah, I miss him a lot and um, we couldn't do the, we couldn't do the burial, we couldn't do the service because it was COVID. So we just finally had a chance. We did it last June, and it was beautiful. There were almost 200 people, and the speeches that people prepared and said, it was just so touching. And again, it just showed us how much he meant to people. 